Hey everybody, this is Corey from Aquarium Co-op. It's June 6th and I told everyone that I would make a video on setting up ponds outside for tropical fish. So I just want to go over some of the things that uh, you may or may not need. You might own some of this stuff already, but in case you own nothing and want to get into this, here's what you're going to need. Uh, so one of the first things, we need your chlorinator. This is going to take chlorine out of water. Uh, so most of you should already own it, you won't need it, but if you did, just pick up some prime. Uh, the next thing you're going to need a container, uh, and that would be anything that's going to hold water. I don't have that in front of me right now, but I'll have a little video that shows different containers. Uh, some options are, uh, I like to run a sponge filter in it. You don't have to, but I do like a little water agitation on the surface. Uh, and you could run an air pump to run this here. You just need this, and some airline tubing, which is nice and cheap. Uh, and then an air pump. This one here it runs one outlet, this one runs two. Hopefully you'll like it enough that you'll run more than one uh, more than one pond. Uh, so some other things you want to pick up. Usually you're going to want uh, some fertilizer, which this is here, some flourish, just some comprehensive basic handle everything. And this is because we're going to use live plants in the uh, ponds. This is kind of the magic of it. You add some fish, you add some plants, you let mother nature take its course and uh, you let the bugs drop in, fish eat them, you make some babies. That's what the fun is. Uh, some other added things that I like to use. Um, here I've got Turbo Start. This is uh, liquid bacteria and it's kept in the fridge and it has a shelf life. But what this will do is this allows me to add bacteria today and then I could add fish tomorrow. Uh, technically I could add fish today but uh, since the water temperature is going to be coming out of my faucet outside, it's going to be too cold, so I'm going to let it sit a day. Uh, but yeah, so if you set up the pond you know, ahead of time or you already have a cycled sponge filter or something like that to give you bacteria, this is unnecessary, but I like to use it because it allows me to use my one day off to go set up a bunch of ponds. So that's that. So in terms of plants, most aquarium plants will work. There's lots to choose from. Uh, I tend to like using floating plants just because those grow real fast, you can't lose the battle of the algae. The dwarf lilies right here, these are awesome because they're basically miniature versions of the big pond lilies that you can buy from a pond store or something like that and these are much cheaper. Um, some other good plants are uh, java moss down here, we've got some java moss, some cichlids there, but the java moss uh, is a nice bottom plant, allows fish to scatter their eggs and whatnot. Uh, we also have uh, hornwort up top here. You can see the hornwort floating, got some Bridget Rasboras hanging out in it, but that is great for egg scatters up top. Uh, there's also water lettuce, water hyacinth, any of the pond plants, lilies, irises, stuff like that, so you can have uh, fun, but Usually you just, you're going to need something floating in there, is what I suggest, and the live plants are a pretty big key. Uh, some other things you're going to want to pick up while you're at the store, if you don't already own it, uh, is food. I suggest picking up first bites. Uh, the reason being is lots of bugs are going to drop into your pond, and all the bigger fish are going to be able to eat that, but we want to continually feed the babies that are coming out, because not all the bugs are going to be small enough for them to eat. Yeah, if you're lucky enough to get your water to go green and stuff like that, it'll be on autopilot. But uh, So I usually like to feed first bites, uh, the fancy guppy food or the micro pellets. Those are both real small foods. And then uh, if you're up to the challenge, feeding frozen foods, uh, the frozen daphnia, we've got cyclops and baby brine. Those are all great frozen foods for... Uh, your pond is really going to make that growth explode so that way by the end of the summer you've got uh, not a, uh, a lot of nice sellable or ready to go into your tank babies. Uh, so yeah. Uh, let's take a look at some fish. Now there's tons of different fish you can do but I'm just going to hit some of the ones that are known to be you know easy. Any of the live bears. Uh, especially platys and variatus. These guys can withstand colder temperatures uh, they're gonna, you're not gonna have to worry about anything eating the eggs. Um, we'll also notice there's some killies in here. Those could be done as well. Uh, let's say you wanted to do Corydoras, which are gonna be, lay eggs for you. You'd want to make sure that they're already mature and ready to lay before they go out. 
Uh, that's one thing you want to keep in mind. If we put two baby angelfish in there, well, come at the end of the summer, uh, it's been three or four months, they're going to be adults, but they probably won't have laid yet. So you'd want to have fish that are ready to spawn when you put them out. Otherwise, you're going to make them look really colorful at the end of the season, but they're not going to have produced any for you. Uh, some other tried and true fish are the white clouds. This is actually the first one I ever bred outside. I usually do some out there each year. They're real easy. You just feed them. They're cold tolerant. They'll go down to 40, 45 degrees. Um, so those are a good choice as well. Uh, this year I've been considering trying some tetras. I'm thinking about trying to breed some of these uh, ember tetra or emperor tetras. Sorry, not embers. And they're an egg scatter, and I just kind of want to try some different things outside this year. I'm hoping that blue eye you can see on there will really look stunning from the pond, you know, because you get to look from the at the fish from a down view instead of a side view like normal. So um, some other good ones are cherry barbs. You know, here we've got some cherry barbs, and uh, they're a pretty easy one to breed. They're going to be an egg scatter. You've got your sword tails, more live bears. They'll do well outside. Uh, rainbow fish are done outside a lot of times, and they're, they, they lay pretty decently sized eggs. Uh, you can pick them from the mops, but it's easier to let them grow out there. Uh, I'd considered doing the little Brigitte rasboras that you can kind of see here. Um, I'm just not sure if they're going to be old enough, so I don't want to use my summer breeding time to grow them out instead of breeding them. So I, I still might try those, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, Guppies are a good one. I definitely am going to be doing some guppies in one of my ponds. Uh, I just love seeing a million little guppies, and if you YouTube and look up guppy ponds and outdoor tanks and stuff, you'll see why. Um, so here we've got some Bolivian rams, and you can do egg layers like a pistos and Bolivian rams when it's warm enough. Um, let's see, here we've got the another consideration I had was this tank. There are some Gertrude Rainbows and some Celestial Pearl Danios, both uh, good choices for outside in a small tub. Uh, but basically, you just want to pick something that, at the end, if you're successful and you've made 200 of a fish, that you're going to enjoy that. There's nothing worse than, you know, throwing out uh, five convicts in a pond and you come back in September and you've got 10,000 convicts, except you didn't want any convicts. Well, that it's not too fun. So I do recommend researching something that you're going to enjoy breeding. And uh, I do recommend getting the whole family in on it. See if uh, someone really loves a fish and try breeding it. Some other good choice here. I'm, I'm walking by some of the Chorpray Danios and the Leopard uh, or Gold Ring Danios. Um, but yeah, so next video we'll talk about setting up a pond. And uh, hopefully this is giving you some ideas. There's a thousand more ideas. I've even thought about setting up a pond just to make uh, mystery snails. But when it's low enough on uh, the pond, they'll just crawl up the pond, lay the eggs, go back down. So in theory that would work. Um, yeah, all right.